Well, hello again, Rock family, and thank you so much for worshiping, fellowshipping, just joining us today for this service. My name is Jeff, and I'm the lead pastor here at The Rock, and I'm so excited to welcome you into this message because God has it tailor-made, custom-designed to fit you and your life. And as you give yourself and as you pour yourself into these truths, He's going to reveal Himself to you in a fresh, new, living, and powerful way that is only going to make your life better. And so thank you for joining us. And I couldn't think of a better way to kick this service off than to welcome a young lady from our church family full of life, full of passion, and I wanted you to hear even her words of what God is doing in her life. Hear her passion and hear God's faithfulness through this kickoff testimony. Hey everyone, can I just start out by saying God is amazing. He is so good, like, oh, so good. You know, this is my second week of OSL, and I am just filled with so much joy, happiness, like, it's just so amazing. I can't even believe it, what he's doing for my life and for my family just by doing, just by following what he wants me to do. It's pretty cool. It makes me feel so much peace in my life. And um, I've had people recently been calling me, people I haven't talked to in a while, just to talk, you know, and I have one friend, he called me and he's like, you know, Cassandra, I'm a bad person. I said, no, you're not a bad person. I was like, in Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And he was like, what? Like, you know, listen, listen to what I said. And he hung up and he just, I could tell that it was something it had touched him. And then I texted it to him too. Remember, this is what it says. And you could tell after I talked to him the next day, he was different. You know, he felt he was happier. It seemed like, then I have one client, she's been feeling really, really down insomnia. She, you know, just a lot of pain. And I go to her today and I was like, you know, how are you feeling? And I'm massaging her. And she was like, I said, are you praying? And she said, yeah, I pray every night. I said, but do you really pray? And she was like, probably not. And I said, just try praying. I said, read your Bible. You know, I said, it's been helping me a lot. It's been helping me to become a better person and just have more energy and, you know, not be a slugger. <laughs> and, you know, and it's, and she texted me literally like 20 minutes after I left her house. And she was like, you know, Cassandra, you're such a blessing. She was like, y you know, I'm really glad you said that. Ask me if I've been praying because I needed that. And I was like, amazing. That it was just what I've learned, I've been practicing and preaching. And it's helping so many people and just making people think, you know, just a, just a thinking. And then they want to work on that. And it's just so amazing to just have it, you know. And I've been, like yesterday, you know, I was, I was, oh, I had kids, you know, I'm stuck at home with five kids and it's crazy. And I was like losing it. And I was like, oh my gosh, I cannot lose my mind here. I need a break. So I went in my room, put on my, I would listen to the slugger and I was just crying. I was like, oh my goodness, this is me. This is me. I don't want to be like that. Wake up, you know, and I, I, I've walked out of the room, feel amazing, not crying. I was like, all right, you know, and since I've been doing my OSL, I've been waking up and, you know, not being lazy. I have more energy, I just have more life in me. And it's like the greatest feeling in the world to have so, to be so full of life. And all this time, all I needed to do was just read my Bible and follow in the Lord, just follow in the Lord, and it just worked. And I'm going, my try my hardest to get everybody to do the same because it, it is important. And people that are down that I know, I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna raise you up. We're getting there. <laughs> I'm not gonna let nobody. Nobody's gonna perish in my way. I'm gonna help everybody. And it's just been so great. And I'm so grateful for everybody that's been helping me. You guys are amazing. I mean, the greatest family ever. And it's so awesome. And I thank you all. And I'm so looking forward to getting back to church and being with you guys. And I miss you all. And I hope you all have a great time. All right, bye. <laughs> Come on. If you're anything like me, then you're going to have to just sit back down, wipe some tears from your eyes perhaps, and grab your Bibles now that you're sufficiently stirred up to jump into the Word of God. Let's uh, grab our seats and grab our Bibles and let's make this declaration together. Let's say, this is my Bible. It is God speaking to me. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. So I open my heart today to hear God speak a word that will change my life forever. Yes, that is all true, dear ones. And so why don't we jump right into the word at Jeremiah chapter 31, beginning in verse 2. It says this, 
Thus says the Lord. What a great way to start. Not just some guy's words or his thoughts. This is the words and the very thoughts of God. Thus says the Lord. The people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. Israel, when I went to give him rest. The Lord has appeared of old to me saying, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. Again, I will build you, and you shall be rebuilt. O virgin of Israel, you shall again be adorned with your tambourines, and shall go forth in the dances of those who rejoice. You shall yet plant vines on the mountains of Samaria. The planter shall plant and eat them as ordinary food. For there shall be a day. Say, there shall be a day. For there shall be a day when the watchman will cry on Mount Ephraim, Arise and let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. Amen. I am telling you, surely the Lord God will bring us out of this wilderness and we will once again come back together and embrace and, and shake hands and love on one another and see each other face to face and look each other in the eye and just have this sweet fellowship. And until that day, the Lord will sustain us. He's drawing us to himself and is teaching us exactly, precisely, and lovingly how to be his people. Amen. There shall be a day, and I'm excited about that day. I know you're excited about that day. All the phone calls during the week that I have are resonating with that message. I am so excited to get back together, and aren't we all? And I want to give you a little encouragement. Here's another testimony from one of our church members, and so I want to hear his words right now. Well, good morning, my Rock family. I miss you guys so much. I love you. I can't wait for us to get back together. And this morning, I just wanted to come to give you a word of encouragement from the book of Isaiah. And in chapter uh, 41, verse 10, it says, Fear not, for I am with you. Do not be anxious, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. See, God will never leave us. He'll never forsake us uh, in good times and bad. Uh, and right now, we're kind of in an uncertain time. There's a lot of fear out there, but God wants us to walk in peace. A peace that passes all understanding, a peace that only He can give us. And so I, I encourage you to grab a hold of these promises of God and walk in them. And I can't wait to see you. I love you guys. Amen and amen and amen. There shall be a day and we will come back together. Listen, church, God's got you. He has got you, absolutely. And also, He's planned this wilderness time. He said, hey, we're all going to be in it. He's planned it for your best, for you to come out of it better than even you went into it, to take you through it and sustain you through it, to provide for you through it in the wilderness, just like He's always done for His people who let Him, who seek Him. And so I encourage you, continue seeking the Lord and let Him be your source, your strength, the lover of your soul and your provider. He will do it. Amen. And so he has this great plan for all of us in the wilderness. And, and not just you individually, and, and not just me individually, but us collectively as a church. He's going to not only teach you exactly how to live your life that best pleases him, but us all as the rock, as the church of God, how to best live for him. And it's exciting to me. He's inviting us to allow him to rebuild our lives from the ground up. And I'm excited to do it. See, he's saying, your routine is already disrupted. It's already all over the place. The world is crazy. He said, I am using this time to rebuild you. And it's not like you had to say, listen, folks, I'm just going to take a, a little sabbatical from everyday life and from my normal routine. And however that messes you up, sorry about it, but I, I just got to take some time for me. Got to take some me time. The Lord is like, y'all got me time now. And so what he's saying is instead of making it you time, make it him time. Right, Me and Jesus time. And let the Lord rebuild, replant, reestablish, relay the foundation for your life that is going to be the best life. Remember your best life now? I'm into it. Let's get our best life right now. And it's only going to happen as we dig into the promised land of God's word, find out what his instructions are. In fact, dare I say, commands to us are. They're more than just instructions or suggestions. The Lord has a way and we need to walk in that way. Somebody say amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. So uh, the fact that you didn't have to establish this or, or jump out after it, he's saying, I'm laying the foundation for you. Just, just ride the wave and everything will be great and I will build you during this time. 
We're in the series, Supernatural Development, and this is message number eight, called Rebuilt in the Wilderness. Or, if you like, Extreme Makeover, Wilderness Edition. So, (laughs) I'm not sure if that tickles your fancy or not, but why don't we go ahead and turn to two places in our Bibles. Can we turn to Jeremiah 24 and Ezekiel 36? Jeremiah 24 and Ezekiel 36. In fact, put a marker in Ezekiel 36 and let's begin at Jeremiah 24. In verse 7 it says, Then I will give them a heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people. And I will be their God, for they shall return to me with their whole heart. You hear these words? With their whole heart heart. That is God's plan for his people. And this is a foundational verse. This might be even worth memorizing. Return to him with our whole heart. Why don't we pray as we kick this service off? Lord Jesus, we approach you as you instruct, humbly yet boldly, offering ourselves to you. We are living sacrifices, holy, acceptable to you, We're asking you to rebuild every area of our lives from the foundation on up. In this holy moment, we give you our whole heart. Would you personalize that and say this with me? Come on. Say, Lord, I give you my whole heart. Come on, say it again. Lord, I give you my whole heart. Amen. Amen. In Matthew 5, 6, it says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. The hungry and the thirsty. Remember I talked about you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink? (laughs) Yes, still true. But uh, it was so great. Edie had had followed up with that message and said, Yeah, but you can salt his oats. And I I really, that really resonated with me. It's like we want to inspire and invite people to take hold of God's words and his promises and all the good things that he has for us. And some people are just disinterested. But how can we season that? How can we be, let's say, salt and light in the world as the Bible calls us? How can we salt these oats and make people crave and be hungry? And it's like, I got a hankering. I need a little something. You know, get, give me, I want some hunger and thirsty people around me. If I have hungry and thirsty people, it's like my grandma said, I like cooking for hungry people. Isn't that right? It's, it's difficult when you make a meal and it's like, eh, I just ate or I'm not hungry or I'm satisfied with whatever I got. You know, that's kind of <laughs> miserable. That's kind of sad if you think about it. But the Lord is looking for hungry and thirsty people because he will satisfy the hungry and the thirsty. And so we want them to choose for themselves to drink of this living water that Jesus offers. Remember, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. The hungry and thirsty, I'll tell you this, they're not interested in just a little taste. A little little taste in my mouth. No, no, no. The hungry and thirsty, they're there for the whole thing, the whole meal. I want to eat it. I want to be filled up after this thing. Filled with the Word of God. Filled with the Holy Spirit. Filled with joy and peace and blessing and comfort. Amen. Filled with power and love. Hungry and thirsty people are all in. And you might even want to ask yourself, and as we look at Mark 12, am I all in with Jesus? Am I all in? Let's look at this passage together in Mark 12, verse 30 to 34. It says, And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. Commandment. (laughs) And the second, like it, is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. It's very true. There is no greater commandment than these, Jesus said. And so there's no greater commandment. Maybe we should give some more attention than we ever have to these before. Love God first and best and love your neighbor as yourself. Love those very close to you. And and we've been talking about in your household, your family, your neighbors, your actual neighbors, and your church family. Yeah, we're not seeing each other face to face right now. But we will. (laughs) And this is a time that we're supposed to be taught how to love 
better than ever before. And in fact, love supernaturally to the level that God calls us to love. The level to which the world is going to see us love each other so well, and they'll be like, I've never had that before, and I want some. I'm hungry for that kind of supernatural love. Amen. Jesus intends for us all to live in the reality and the fullness of the great exchange. OSL level one disciples, I'm talking to you here. Isn't that right? The great exchange. You may even want to just sound off right now. The great exchange. Jesus trading in for us. It's so beautiful. It's like I traded my sickness for healing. I traded my sorrow for joy. I traded in my barrenness for fruitfulness. I traded in my sin for righteousness. I traded in my preferences to show love instead. I traded in my rebellion for obedience. I traded in my rights for true freedom. You know, born again people, people who have lived in the great exchange and the fullness of that, we don't go around talking about, well, I got a right. I got a right to this and I got a right to that. You don't have any right. Dead men don't have rights. I, you died and your life's now hidden with Christ in God. That's the great exchange. This is the new you. The old you died, crucified that sucker. And now I take up my cross daily and I follow him. Amen. The incredible truth of salvation is I get all of Jesus and all it takes is all of me. My busted up parts, my brokenness, all of my sin and my disobedience and the way that I've displeased and dishonored God. I trade all that in and I get all of the best of creation and of eternity and of everything. All of Jesus for all of me. Praise God. I want to paint a picture of what God has always had in mind for you. Can I do it? Would you let me do it? Exodus 19 verses 4 and 5. Turn to Exodus 19 verses 4 and 5. It's right in the beginning of the Bible. Second book. Genesis, Exodus, and of course our OSL students know that. Genesis, Exodus, and you're there. (laughs) Exodus 19, verses 4 and 5 say this. It's the Lord speaking again. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Hear the tenderness in the Lord's voice. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant then you shall be a special treasure to me, a daily delight to me above all people. For all the earth is mine. The Lord is saying, I own everything. I know where everything is. I know where all the treasure is. I know where all the riches is. I own the cattle on the thousand hills. And check it out, I own the hills too. I made the hills. The hills are alive with the sound of music. I own the music. (laughs) I own life. God is the owner of it all, and He is the great distributor of it all. Talk about the redistributor of wealth. The Lord is doing it. He knows how to get you exactly what you need in the precise moment that you need it. And as we participate in this word, keep the covenant, keep the commandments, He certainly does His part every time. Aren't you glad about that, that we have a faithful God? In fact, He calls Himself that I am God, the faithful God. He's bringing us to himself. Extreme makeover wilderness edition. Bringing him to us to himself. In John 12, verses 32 and 33, the book of John, the Gospels in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, chapter 12, verses 32 and 33 say this. And I, Jesus says, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all peoples... To myself. Hear the same heart, the same sentiment again. I'll draw all peoples to myself. Now, this he said, signifying by what death he would die. Now, this in this case, though, we look at the cross, we talk about the blood of Calvary, we talk about the suffering of Jesus, the sacrifice of Jesus. And yeah, it's very true. He was he was lifted up in that way, and we also exalt and magnify him in our thinking, in our minds, in our hearts. And as we obey him above obeying our own desires, that is also lifting him up. Isn't that true? And so in this context of this scripture, yeah, it's about the cross and being uh, physically lifted up uh, into uh, several feet off the ground and all that. But in our hearts, we are lifting up 
Jesus and exalting him. Uh, in the next couple chapters, in fact, John chapter 14, turn a page or two over, and let's look at verses 2 and 3 here. Jesus again says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Jesus is a great preparer, and he's trying to do it again for us. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you. Huh, where do you think? To myself. Are you seeing a pattern here? I'll receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. This is the heart of God for us. He wants to be with us, always has, and always will. That's why he made eternity a reality, a possibility. And all we have to do is trade in our lives for his and say yes to him. In Hosea 2, 19 and 20, said, God says, I will betroth you to me forever. Hear that drawing you to myself? I'll betroth you to me forever. Yes, I will betroth you to me in righteousness and justice, in loving kindness and mercy. I will betroth you to me in faithfulness, and you shall know the Lord. And in verse 23, it even says this. It says, Then I will say to those who were not my people, You are my people. It's like, you're my people now. And they shall say, You are my God. Bless God. Come on, Rock family. Can we declare that together? Can we say, You are my God. Come on, say it again. You are my God. The Lord loves to hear you say that. He loves to hear your trust being expressed to Him. See, rebuilding is not a new concept. In the scriptures it's not a new concept in human history I mean Romans tells us for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God we all fall not just fell that one time or fell those 50,000 times we continually fall short anyone with me I know I'm not alone come on don't leave me hanging out here alone we all fall short but God lifts us up amen the righteous fall and they rise up again and God helps us every time God helps us to regain our footing and to get back on track on solid ground. He asks us to repent because that's the only way to say, yeah, I fell there. I recognize it. He doesn't want us to keep falling in the same pit. Winnie the Pooh, remember, he was like, we keep looking for home, we keep finding this pit. I don't know, maybe if we look at this pit, we might find home. <laughs> and I, I think there's a lot of wisdom in Winnie the Pooh there. And uh, sure enough, they did. So like, look at it and say, I'm not going to jump in that pit again. I know where it is and I need to find God's way from my life. And then he wants to rebuild. After you repent, he wants to rebuild and rebuild those neural connections, those neural pathways and say, okay, you've been thinking this way. I'm going to put a new thought in you instead of I'm miserable. I'm worthless. I'm always going to be the first one to get sick. I'm always going to be in debt. I, ah, whatever. All that negativity. The Lord says, no, no, no. You're above only and not beneath. You're the head. You are not the tail. You are my special treasure. I'm drawing you to myself. You are worth my son's sacrifice. God is telling you all these things. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Your perfection comes from me, and I see you now as perfect. Yes, I know you stumble and make mistakes, but I look at you through my son's perfection, and I attribute that to you. Bless God. That is, that is good news, church. In Judges 21, verses 23 and 24, it says, Then they went and returned to their inheritance, and they rebuilt the cities and dwelt in them. So the children of Israel departed from there at that time, every man to his tribe and his family. Look at the nearness, the closeness of that. They went out from there, every man to his inheritance. And in Acts 15, starting at verse 15, it says, And with this, the words of the prophets agree, just as it is written, After this, I will return and will rebuild the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. I will rebuild its ruins, and I will set it up, so that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord. Oh, God's got an agenda here. This is every good thing he does for you is not just for you. It's going to be for everybody else too. They're going to see it. Know that there is a real God. And if we are telling them, if we're testifying, if we're saying it, then they will know they've got an in. And, uh, and again, if they're doing it right, they got an all in. Amen. So that the rest of the mankind may seek the Lord, even all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord who does all these things.
Now, let's look at Ezra chapter 5. In Ezra chapter 5, it says this, We are the servants of the God of heaven and earth, and we are rebuilding the temple that was built many years ago, which a great king of Israel built and completed. And in Nehemiah 2, verses 4 and 5 says, So I prayed to the God of heaven, and I said to the king, If it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in your sight, I ask that you send me to Judah, to the city of my father's tombs, that I may rebuild it. And in a couple chapters later in Nehemiah 6, it says, Now it happened when Sanballat, Tobiah, and Geshem the Arab, and the rest of our enemies heard that I had rebuilt the wall and that there were no breaks left in it. There's no easy access in to derail us, to get us off track, to attack us. Though at that time I had not hung the doors and the gates, that Sanballat and Geshem said to me, saying, Come, let us meet together in the villages in the plain of Ono. <laughs> oh no. But they thought to do me harm. Verse 3 says, So I sent messengers back to them, saying, I am doing a great work, so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it and go down to you? You see the, the dedication of this man of God rebuilding the things that God is meaning to establish and reestablish. He said, this has been my plan all along, but it's fallen into disrepair. It's fallen into ruin. And now I am planning to rebuild it. Join me in the work and I will rebuild it through your efforts. He's calling us to the same thing today. And while we may not be rebuilding a temple, we may not be rebuilding walls around the city. We are rebuilding our lives, our schedules, our priorities. We we're rebuilding our family structure, our, our church engagement and involvement, and how we witness and testify to the world around us. Yeah, we're rebuilding something, all right, and God is helping us do it. And so I tell you today, don't quit. Don't stop. Don't get derailed. I'm doing a great work. I cannot come down to all this. I can't come down to the level that I used to live at. I can't just succumb to peer pressure. I can't succumb to even me being feeling tired in myself or whatever else. No, no, no. The Lord has energy and strength and power for you to be able to accomplish all that he's put you to. But that's, that's the key element, though, is God. Don't rely on yourself either. Uh, I remember Pastor Chad Budlong at the first rock conference I went to talk about the Christ-reliant silo. We need to go to that silo, not the self-reliant silo. That thing is, <laughs> is drained and uh, there's, a, there's a hole in the floor. Uh, the Christ-reliant silo is always filled up with every good thing that we're going to need. Amen. In Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 8. Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 8. It says this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge God, and He will direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. These are precious promises to me. I mean, are you like me? Are you interested in health and strength? Amen. Me too. Let's get it. Let's get it. But that requires us not leaning on our own understanding, but acknowledging God in all of our ways, all the ways that we conduct our lives. Amen. All right, now let's look at this scripture in Isaiah. And uh, this was also used at the 9-11 time, just after 9-11. And we're all rallying together and strength and all this. And we're going to rebuild. And, and I want you to hear this. The senators that used this in their little speech, they misused it. And uh, this wasn't supposed to be a positive thing because it was, again, leaning on our own understanding and our own might and our own vigor. Kind of reminds me of the Tower of Babel, those people. You know, we're going to build a tower to heaven. And, it's, and look, everyone's going to look at us and think how great we are. Yeah, that's not the way. Look to God. Now listen to this. It says, The Lord sent a word against Jacob. Now Jacob is a covenant term. This is God's covenant people. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And then of course the twelve heads of Israel. Jacob later becomes Israel. So we have the children of Israel or the Israelites. The Lord sent a word against Jacob and it's fallen on Israel. All the people will know. Ephraim and the inhabitant of Samaria who say, In pride and arrogance of heart, the bricks have fallen down, but we will rebuild with hewn stones. 
The sycamores are cut down, but we will replace them with cedars. Therefore the Lord shall set up the adversaries of resin against him and spur his enemies on, the Syrians before the Philistines behind. And they shall devour Israel with an open mouth. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. For the people do not turn to him who strikes them, nor do they seek the Lord of hosts. Our responsibility is to seek God and let him supply. Let him be our nurturer, our developer, our healer, our restorer. The Lord our God is rebuilding his people right now, today. In this moment, part of it is going on in you, even in the hearing of these words and the building of your faith as the word of God enters your ears and enters your heart. He's drawing us to himself. He's drawing us to the word. You know, the word from the very beginning, from the foundations of creation, who who even would walk in the garden in the cool of the day with his people, right, disciples? Uh, The master craftsman, the one who delights in you every day. We're instructed to dwell in him, and he says he will dwell in us richly. And this only happens by diligent obedience to the word. We obey the word of God. We obey Jesus. And that's how we know that he's going to rebuild us. We see it in here. We're going to know also what he wants to produce in us. Not only in the wilderness, but in the war to come, in the spirit. And also in the promised land that we walk into very confidently to dispossess any wrong thing, anything that doesn't belong there anymore. We're going to kick it right out and we're going to occupy that territory in the name of Jesus. And so I want to hear some good things that God is doing from other friends in our church, other family members. These are the Jeffersons, my longtime dear friends. Let's hear what they have to say. Hi, Rock family. This is the Jeffersons. We miss you very much, guys. Very much. Well, we wanted to just let you guys know how, what uh, have we been blessed during all this time and what's been going on. I believe what we've been, what's happened to us has been a blessing. I mean, God has not broken any promises, has not gone back at any promise. He has truly, truly taken care of us. I believe we have not missed a mortgage payment. We have not, our lights are still on, even though they say that uh, they're not going to turn them off. But uh, we have made our payments on our, on our house and uh, and lights and water. All, everything has been paid for. And even though I wasn't, I, I've been out of work and nobody's working, uh, he's been faithful. Yes. And I believe that's because we have been faithful tithers too with what we have. You know, our whole family's been affected by what's been going on and and I believe God has brought us together as a whole family. Restoration. I mean, yeah, restoration, restoration as a whole family yeah. and uh, we're all in the house and we've been doing a lot of things together so that's been a blessing as yes. well. Yes. <laughs> and uh, I think the final blessing is that, you know, we got to come out of this one day. <laughs> one day. <laughs> <laughs> we got to come out of this and I believe, I believe in the Israelite movement when the, they were taken out of uh, captivity out of Egypt they came out very, very rich, very, very wealthy. Yes. And I truly believe that that's what God has done for us. I believe when we come out of this, we're going to be wealthy. Even because, more so, yeah. Yes, because I even started a new job. But I am working from home until they open up the door and say, hey, you can go back to work now. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I believe With that. wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> and God does truly keep his word and his promises. And so we're just holding on to those. We love you guys. See you one Sunday. We In person. <laughs> God is so faithful to keep all his promises in his word. Let, let me tell you again what God's great plan is for you. It comes out of Ezekiel. We find it here in chapter 36. Thus says the Lord God on verse 33. On the day that I cleanse you from all your iniquities, I will also enable you to dwell in cities and the ruins shall be rebuilt. The desolate land shall be tilled instead of lying desolate in the sight of all who pass by. So they will say, this land that was desolate has become like the Garden of Eden. And the wasted, desolate, and ruined cities are now fortified and inhabited. Then the nations which are left all around you shall know that I, the Lord, have rebuilt the ruined places and planted what was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken it, and I will do it. Thus says the Lord God, 
I will also let the house of Israel inquire of me to do this for them. (laughs) Thank you, God. I will increase their men like a flock, like a flock offered as a holy sacrifice, like the flock at Jerusalem on its feast days. So shall the ruined cities be filled with flocks of men. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. He's telling us the truth here again. Church, can we embrace all of these truths that God wants to rebuild us in a certain specific, powerful, and blessing way to you? Let's pray right now and and receive these deeply before the Lord. Let's pray this together. Would you join me in this? Say, Heavenly Father, I see all your good plans for me. I believe that you still have them for me. I ask for strength and health. I ask for your help to dwell in your word. I ask for wisdom to obey it all. I trust you to come through for me. So I trust you with me, all of me, all of my attention, all of my love, all of my heart, all of my resource, all of my passion. I freely give you all of me because I can trust you with all of me. And if you prayed that prayer right now, and want to trade in your broken, messed up, sinful, disobedient life for Jesus' perfect life, to gain heaven and all the blessing that comes even in this life, on this side of heaven, that comes with belonging to Jesus, would you speak this out of your mouth as a confession, as a declaration? Let's say this together. God, I am so sorry for the wrong I've done. I choose to learn about you and about myself in the Bible and here in the rock. I dedicate myself to living in obedience to your plans for me. I believe that you powerfully raised Jesus from the dead. And I ask that you'll receive me to yourself. Because right now, I give you all of me. In Jesus' name, amen. (laughs) Amen. If you added that portion to your prayer today, let me be the first to say congratulations and welcome to the family of God, to the kingdom of God, to the salvation and power and freedom and peace and joy and all the rest, all the blessing of God. You have just entered God's family today and he is serious about it. In fact, the angels in heaven are rejoicing. They're throwing a party because you have trusted the Lord with your life. That's what the Lord means. It means you own me now. I traded in my life for yours. I'm living your life now. And so as you learn, as you read the Bible in the days to come, and as you pray, and as you find out through these messages who you are, your new identity, and what it takes to live for Jesus, you're going to discover it's the best decision you could have ever made. And I'm so excited about it. We will need to hear from you if you took that step. But we want to hear from everybody. And so after this service concludes, I want everyone to go to therockasperia.life and take all of your next steps. And there's gonna be a little check box on the service card, so we'll all fill out the service card, agreed? Yes? And so you'll check the box and say, yes, I have become a Christian today. I prayed that prayer. And for everybody else, let's write down your name, who's worshiping with you, give us your prayer requests and your praise reports. As always, we are constantly going through those, rejoicing for the, the prayers that have been answered and praying for the ones that are about to be answered in the name of Jesus. It's exciting. And also on that same site, you can stay faithful with your giving to the Lord. In fact, here's the, the furtherance of that verse in Proverbs 3 that I didn't read you in verses 9 and 10. It says, honor the Lord with your possessions 
when the first fruits of all of your increase, so that your barns will be filled and your vats will overflow with new wine. Again, do you hear the, the Lord's heart toward you? It, he's saying, if you do this, I will do this. I will show up for you. And so we'll keep our giving on track. And I'm telling you, church, you're doing so amazingly well. I get to brag on you all the time. People ask, how's the church going, man? Are everyone freaking out? I said, no, they're doing great. More people are coming than ever before. Our giving is right on track. We're making all of our bills. Nothing has had to change. You're so faithful and God is going to reward you according to the promises he's made you in his word. Amen. And lastly, but not leastly, <laughs> leastly, I want to invite you to this rock lab that I'm starting. The rock lab is practical everyday discipleship. And so come, it's 30 to 45 minutes. We're going to deeply engage with what does real life look like for me? How do I do this stuff in the scripture? And so it's gonna kick off on May 31st. We're putting a plan together. But if you wanna sign up for that and get more information, again, the rockasperia.life on the events tab, you can sign up right there. So many of you have already, and I'm so thankful that you have. We're gonna have a great time together, and we are going to win this desert and receive it fully, just as Jesus has given it to us, that we're going to go with confidence and boldness because we're obedient to the Word of God in very practical ways, in Jesus' name. Can I leave you with a blessing from the book of Ezekiel? Ezekiel 36, verses 9 through 11 says, For indeed I am for you, and I will turn to you, and you shall be tilled and sown. I will multiply men upon you, all the house of Israel, all of it, and the city shall be inhabited, and the ruins rebuilt. I will multiply upon you man and beast, and they shall increase and bear young. More people are going to be coming to the Lord. I will make you inhabited as in former times, and do better for you than at your beginnings. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. <laughs> Let God rebuild you, and I declare over you, you shall be rebuilt in Jesus name. I look forward to seeing you right back here next week, dear ones. God bless you.